Welcome back, I'm Tedward, and today's the day we're gonna take the 911 out of so uh, winter storage. It's spring now, tomorrow's the first day of spring, and I said that when that patch of snow in the lawn is fully melted or close enough, we'll take it out. So anyway, I've just pulled it off the tender, so let's do a quick spot check and make sure this is all set. If you don't know this car, if you're new to the channel, this is my 1988 911 3.2 liter Carrera, and I guess it's still not warm enough for these struts. Oh, that's gonna knock me in the head. But okay, let's pop these little leads off. Not attached to anything, don't worry. And I've got this handy little battery disconnect, which makes life a little bit easier and safer. We've got lights, that's always a good sign. And before we get started, Let's just take a quick peek in the back and make sure that we didn't have any mice living in the intake and we're gonna just start it full of acorns. I think we'll be okay. Just, And we can also assume that we didn't see any massive oil leaks because the floor is clear and if this thing was leaking oil, trust me, you'd know. Let's hop in and see if she'll start. Oh, now, I don't didn't winterize this the way I normally do because I got caught in a snowstorm last year. Normally what happens is I go through the time to make sure that there's a nice full tank of gas, put a little stable in it and run it and cover it, make sure it's all waxed and perfect, but I put it away and then we got a huge snowstorm and it never melted again. So the car just kind of sat. And I've learned to push the car back out of the garage just a bit because it gets pretty smoky on the first startup. It's gonna push a lot of oil through, so. Let's see what happens. Good neutral, clutch in. All right. And then the thing we're gonna watch for is this oil pressure. It'll take a second for it, uh, enough pressure to build up to get to the sender, but what you wanna see is that oil pressure build. <laughs> The garage door open and the car backed out of the garage, I still feel like I'm going to asphyxiate from exhaust fumes. This oil level sender, it'll even out. It's probably just stuck, but once we move around, it'll come down to the middle. That's not a big deal. I definitely know it's not overfilled. And we're starting off the season with 87,200 and I think 59 miles. Rusty brakes. All right, let's take a look under the hood. Just make sure we don't have any obvious leaks or anything weird going on. That belt is a little floppier than I want it to be, but we'll find out if it fails. Definitely dirty, needs a bath. Craft detailing would probably do a good job with it. Uh, the front of the car has actually been repainted. So from here forward was repainted. And whoever did it didn't do a phenomenal job. We'll get up close and personal with it later. But you know, there's definitely some orange peel, not so concerned about that, but there's really, there's dripping and stuff. And I'm concerned about how thick that paint is. So there's a ton of swirl marks, but I'm terrified if they put any type of compounder on that front. New registration and sticker in the glove box, good to have. I was just listening to Matt Farah talk about pulling his Countach out of the Peterson Museum because he lent it to them for their supercar show. And he was worried that like, oh, it's been sitting for so long, I don't want anything bad to happen to it. And I'm thinking to myself like, welcome to New England, man. Every car, every car sits for, for months and months on end. So it's always good to get them out and just kind of warm them up slowly. Suspension's feeling good. This is a one-way street, by the way. I'm not a crazy person. So suspension's feeling nice, everything's tight. I had this car serviced uh, two years ago up at Catchell Motor Company uh, in Lawrence, KMC. And they went through and did a ton of work on this car just to freshen it up. And my goodness, did it make a difference. Even just like an alignment went a long way. 
but it's nice to feel that there's no knocks or anything. I mean, I'm not pushing it hard. I just want to know, like, is there anything, anything that fell apart over the winter? Oh, now that she's all warmed up, it's feeling a lot nicer, a lot nicer. My God, this thing really feels sludgy and weird when it's cold, but let's jump on the highway just to make sure everything's in check. crazy is just how high the limits of this car are with the sticky tires like you almost wouldn't expect it to be but like you can really chuck this thing in not hearing anything happening on suspension so that's good no clunks and now we'll just glide onto the highway nice and smoothly probably overly cautious about when I take the car out of storage like nothing nothing's gonna happen in this car it's fine like there's really nothing about it that concerns me in a way that makes me feel like oh no I've taken it out of storage what could have gone wrong over the winter like unless the mice have gotten to it and eaten electrical wires and things like that I'd probably already know but it seems to be running strong it's coming up the temp nicely I've got oil pressure I'm not seeing any obvious drips when I get out of the car that's a good sign all good things it always strikes me how fast you can drive this car without without it feeling fast like we're doing i mean i'm doing 80 right now i gotta slow down a little bit it's crazy that this 1988 car at 80 miles an hour which and, and i know it's a 1988 but it, it, it might as well be from the 70s or even the 60s there's not a whole lot in this car that's like super modern even by 80s standards i mean the thing is air cold and uh you know it's, it's just pretty nuts, this blinker, man. I hate this blinker stocks. They're very sticky. And that, that's not like, oh, this one. It's just like they are all very cheesy. They would never, no one would ever tolerate these blinker stocks if this car came out today. Holy crap. It is a low car, so I try to pick and choose where I drive it, especially early in the spring because the highways haven't been patched yet. So there's sections, there's bridges that are just really torn up. This car is very hard to heel toe just because the, uh, the, the brake pedal is so far in front of that throttle. I mean, it's doable, but if you were really going for it, like if you wanted to heel toe this car, it would mean that you were so deep in the brakes that you'd practically be locking them up. I mean, you'd be like threshold braking on a racetrack. Always the chatter from behind in these cars. If your 911 doesn't sound broken, it probably is. Give me that arrow. the pothole line the winter line the winter line is the pothole line oh man this thing feels good so tight always good when you've got a great alignment too this thing is awesome i've got so much negative camber up front i think it's like negative two i think we dialed it back from negative 2.8 degrees to negative 2.5 or negative 2.4 it's still a very aggressive setup in the front but it's a lot easier to drive than it was before that alignment um and it holds true i mean god this thing is just a blast so some of you have been around here for a while and you know the story of the car. Uh, ooh, nice GT4. Hello, 718 GT4, brand new. 
I bought this car on an impulse. Uh, my One of my closest friends uh, passed away. He, he took his own life six years ago. Six years ago, I think I'm right, geez, man. I'm like losing track. It feels like a long time. Um, but yeah, six years ago, uh, on April, or sorry, March 23rd. And I bought this car in March, uh, right after that happened, because I was so broken and so destroyed after that, after that event that I, I needed something to remember him by. And I'm usually not like sentimental with objects, I guess. Well, maybe I am. Maybe that's totally lying. Um, I guess I'm a little sentimental with objects. But I think I just wanted something that like he would have loved. So I found this car on Craigslist and I picked it up. And I, I, I mean, it was totally lucky that the car wasn't a heap of crap because I didn't do a PPI. I got under the car and looked at it myself, but this is like the first, the first, A, the first Porsche I ever drove, and definitely the first air-cooled car I'd ever driven. So, you know, I, I got very lucky that after buying this car and having it checked out, it was it was in tip-top condition for the most part. But it means a lot to me, and, and, and because of the timing of his death, because it was right as spring started, it, it made spring really weird. So I'm always thinking about him, but then, you know, as I'm coming out of the winter depression, you know, he's he's the thing I'm thinking about. And he was such a car nut. I mean, you think I'm a car nut. I've never, I don't think I've met anyone who was more passionate about motorsports than my buddy Anton. And it's like this nice connection to him to be able to drive this car and it would be very hard for me to sell this ever because of just that, you know, the memory of him and why I own it. It's so scary when you buy these cars for the first time and you're like, actually, oh, I own this and you hear all the noises. Because it's one thing when you drive someone else's car and you know, you drive around the block and you're like, oh, somebody hit that hard, holy shit. Um, it's one thing when you drive around the block in someone else's car and you're like, oh my God, that's awesome. You know, someone gives you the keys to a Ferrari or, or a Porsche or something and you're like, oh my God, how cool is this? And it is. It's very different though. And this is the same with every car. Doesn't matter if it's fancy or fun or whatever. When it, it, it's after you've driven the car for a few hundred miles and then you stop at a red light and the car's hot, you got off the highway and you start hearing all the sounds it makes. Does it hold an idle well enough? Does it bob a little bit? Are there little like, you know, and you start getting really sensitive to all these things. So when you buy a car, especially like an air-cooled 911, they make all kinds of noises, all kinds of noises that you genuinely don't feel comfortable with until you get used to them. So unless you grew up with these cars, I think a lot of these sounds are just straight up frightening. Oh, that second gear is so tall, I always forget. Jeez, man, tall gearing. Very much unlike the Jag. The Jag, that, that yellow E-Type, man, the gearing on that is like, could not be more different than this. Oh, I haven't filled this up in a long time. All right, let's fill her up. Well, thank you guys so much for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. I just wanted to take this out for a quickie to make sure it wasn't dead and that everything was going to be okay. But it seems happy. It seems good. I'll check the tire pressures. They don't. Nothing looks obviously flat, which is a nice sign, right? And anything else? No. I mean, look, we're not pissing oil. And in the Porsche world, even that's considered a win, so don't forget to respect the drive. Get your toys out of winter storage, and I'll see you in the next one. Yeah, Massachusetts has a lot of red lights where they say no turn on red. And if there's no no turn on red, you can, in fact, turn on red. Except a lot of times the ones that are legal to turn on red are incredibly dangerous and like this house blocks the entire view this is a 40 mile an hour road so if somebody comes through at 40 miles an hour and i'm just kind of creeping out like i'm probably not going to know until it's too late so i always question like the thought process i'm like how come this one doesn't get a no turn on red this is bananas i would never want to be caught here